Hello, my watch friends. Today, I'd like to share with you something really more specific in terms of micromechanics for watchmaking and specifically timekeeping. What we have here is a Rolex 1675 GMT. It's got a 1570 caliber movement in it. It came in for an overhaul. I serviced the movement, cleaned everything, lubricated, put it back together and put it on the time grapher. And I got something really interesting going on. And I'd like to share it with you. When you time a watch out, you look at how it's running in different positional changes. Dial up, dial down, crown up, crown down, crown left and crown right. So you're often in crown left, crown down, and dial up. Those are the three most important positions to average. I timed this out in six positions and what I noticed was the average of the six positions is minus 0.33 seconds. Our amplitude was about 270s, 280s with very small positional change of only about two to four seconds. So that's pretty good, right? But something different happened in crown down and crown up. Crown down, we got a rate of 27 seconds per day. And in crown up, we had minus 22 seconds per day. So that's a huge shift in positional variation and rate. We call that delta. So. Uh, after sales tolerance for Rolex on the 1500 caliber movements like this one is a maximum acceptable delta of 25 seconds in five positions. So this one is 49 seconds, very, very high. It's way out of spec. So there's two things. Firstly, you look at for is the hairspring, is it maybe is it out of center? Is it out of flat, out of round? And then the second thing is, uh, obviously, is there a poise issue? In other words, is one side of the balance wheel a little heavier than another side causing this rate change when there's a positional change in the watch? So what we're gonna do today, we're going to take the balance off the watch, we're gonna take the hairspring off, we're gonna observe the hairspring, make sure it's centered, maybe do a static poising of the balance, and, uh, and see if we can get this delta down from 49 seconds to within acceptable tolerances. I'm just taking power out of the mainspring now. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it back on our time grapher and apply power to the mainspring just enough. And what we should see if this is a poise issue is we should see a flip-flop in the rate. Crown up was minus 22 and it's flip-flopped. Now it's looking very high. With crown down, we were at plus 27, and you notice a flip-flop there as well. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this balance wheel off, we're gonna observe the hairspring, and we're gonna observe how, uh, how it looks on the actual poising tool. We're gonna verify that the balance is marked for the stud. Yes, in fact it is. If you notice this little dot right there, that marker is preset there by the factory. So looks like it's there. So that's good. I don't have to mark it myself. Let's also look at the hairspring itself to see how does that spiral look. Um, I did notice ever so slight adjustment that needed to be made at the stud. We're gonna still take this out and look at it by itself too. Uh, off of the balance, it'll be easier to see. aside and let's have a look just at the hairspring using this sheet of glass okay so it's it's pretty good overall it could be centered just a hair I think uh, but for the most part I think it's it's pretty good and and again we weren't seeing too much of a beat error variation across positions what we were seeing was a rate Air. So I'm going to center it just a hair by the collet. Very, very slight adjustment there. I'm just looking to see if they're mushroomed at all or 
bent. This bottom one not as clean as the top, but but they're okay. I don't think this needs to be restaffed. Now we're going to get our poison tool out. This tool has been quite important. It effectively has a level, and you need to make sure that it levels up properly. Once you get it level, then you can put your balance on and start the process of spinning it, which can be very, very tedious. By spinning the balance on these jeweled jaws, you basically figure out whether or not there's a heavy spot by how the balance spins when it comes to its resting point. I'm using air to gently spin the balance wheel. Yep, I think I'm finding the heavy spot. Okay. I like to take a picture to see under a loop, basically. Where is this stopping? What is the position of the roller table when it comes to its resting point? And we compare that after a few different spins. You have to leave the roller table on because it's sprung weight. So it's included with the balance when uh, the hairspring is mounted. You don't leave the hairspring on because the hairspring is actually unsprung weight. And this stopped in a slightly different place, but still the roller table is north of center and then south of it. Oh, and it moved back to other position. Just all on its own? Yeah. So again, showing that it's only got a heavy spot. You see how it's rocking back and forth? Okay, so I think I've got a sense of where it is. Gently pick this up. And that means that the heavy spot is right there at the very bottom of the uh, balance. I have to get a special cutting tool. Just a little at a time. I like to clean it up. Some Rodico. Let's see what it does now. This is where it gets tedious because you have to position it just right. So now I'm just checking the flatness of the hairspring body and the overcoil. The overcoil is a little bit out of flat, but the body looks in. So I'm just gonna gently adjust, make some adjustments here and see if that makes a difference. I like the way the hairspring body is kind of sitting, so I'm just gonna leave it. So welcome back. We just finished the poising uh, and the hairspring adjustment and we've got a nice amplitude of 284. So let's go crown up right now. As you recall, crown up before was a minus 22. That'll take a second to balance out there, but I'm getting a consistent rate of plus two now in crown up. And then crown down before was 
plus 27. And as you can see there, that line is, is nice and straight and I'm getting a fairly consistent read of plus four. So it worked, it worked nicely. This is the difference between having a source of an entirely new balance and reconditioning the original balance so that it works properly. Um, I'm super happy about getting this delta from 49 seconds spread now down to a four second spread across five positions. So really, really excited about that and how it turned out and uh, excited to share that with you guys. So um, yeah, enjoy.